and we are recording. Come on. Is the fans going? Yeah, if you ever notice your computer's going slow, guys, turn up those fans, right? Especially when you're rendering and doing all this stuff. Definitely good practice to have your computer plugged in. And of course, well ventilated, especially if it's a laptop. <laughs> Sorry about that. All right, let's get started. So last time we left off, um, you know, just as a recap, we looked at the topography. We talked about how to make it basically a loft surface, and you know, just how complex that was. That we kind of have to make an object, and then of course subtract actually a lot of things in in order to get what we want. Uh, we found out a better way, um, or at least another way that essentially we have to do anyway um, to make a la laser cut model for this. So um, obviously it's it's good practice to know both methods. Obviously uh, one looks better for perspectives and say like a digital graphic work. And one is obviously easier to use for um, laser cutting and practical model use. However, there was one last thing. Um, I didn't want to rob you of some of the amazing commands that I know and have memorized. So I, w I did want to show you that, you know, sometimes you can download topography models, say from certain websites, or, you know, some people actually have that data, like a, s a site surveyor will actually use a drone, they'll use LiDAR, and then very often they'll give me a three-dimensional model, and I'm like, great, what the hell do I do with this? Right. Um, so another thing that we can do is actually contours. So we can actually extract that information that we need. So actually it's called contour now. It says pick a base point. So obviously I'm going to pick the base. Uh, it says direction of the perpendicular contour lines. Obviously I want topography lines so I'm going to choose my Z direction. It's going to say the distance between the contours. I want them to be 12 inches. Right? Because I want of course every foot line. I'm going to hit enter. Right? And it's actually going to make that topography line for me. You guys see that? Kind of hard to see in the Right, but essentially you can also get this information, right, these slices if you will, is what we'll call them today. You can essentially get these slices also from a surface model, right? So, I mean, we definitely have to work the curves a little bit. You know, obviously you can see what kind of curves it makes, uh, quite ridiculous ones. Um, but it'll perform the exact same task, right? And interesting enough, I mean, there's a huge difference between these two surfaces, even though they really come from the same lines. Uh, obviously we get some different lines out of this, so yeah, just be aware, right? Obviously a studio professor usually doesn't even notice these kinds of things, um, but it's, it's better for us to be um, accurate in that sense. Anyway, let's continue, uh, because really the next step is putting it all together, right? Obviously we'll talk a little bit about how we're going to laser cut this model, but we need to do a couple things first because, well, I don't know, I may have, um, actually if you take a look at this model. Well, Obviously, I want to show that. And essentially what it takes is building the three-dimensional model as accurately as possible first. Um, that way, you kind of understand what it's going to make practically. I think it's pretty obvious that, you know, obviously if we subtract a square from here, that we're going to get some more information that we need, right? So I'm going to take this model, the one that we completed last time. Of course, I completed a little bit more today. I'm going to take a copy of it and use it as my base um, for my digital model. So really this next step, right, we can ready the model for our selected observation towers using bo Boolean difference. Now that's a really vague situation of saying you should subtract your columns from, or any other abstraction material from the base as well, right? This thing can literally grow or um, be very strong. Actually, this could help you a lot in making the model, right? Taking something ever so complex and of course being able to put it together like a puzzle rather than sort of, uh, what's the word? 
improv model making, right? I don't know if you guys have ever experienced this, but as sometimes I was making a study model, I'd be like, here, attach this. That looks great, right? And of course, change the whole project. However, this is not the exercise, right? We're definitely trying to make an accurate digital model and of course, most quite literally copy it, right? In a, in a physical realm. So there are certain limitations. Anyway, uh, step three. We can add our vertical circulation and refine the model as necessary to dial in the unit as it is a perfect representation of, right? Kind of what I'm trying to say, right? We're trying to make a perfect digital model. That way, of course, we can mimic it in reality. So let's get that last model that we had. So in my case, I need to put show, get the rest of my stuff. And I need to go on and get a few things. I need to get my completed abstract model. So I'm going to go ahead and group these so I don't accidentally miss something. I'm just going to group it. And what's nice about group is, you know, it's all together. You know, I can't miss anything. Got a lot of stuff going on, so definitely want to get all my parts. So I got my base, my abstraction, and let's get my uh, kind of completed stair. Might have to refocus. Got a lot of stuff in here. That's okay. I'm going to go ahead and group those as well. Of course, I can always ungroup, not a big deal. And let's go ahead and hide the rest so my computer doesn't explode. Sweet. Uh, we still kind of need this. We're going to talk about the laser cutter, so I'll put that off to the side. Uh, I guess we don't really need that anymore. And we've already done tracing it, at least for the sake of tutorial. However, you know, I wouldn't do this exact step. I wouldn't just go in and start deleting your stuff. The only reason I am is um, it helps the record go a lot better. In fact, maybe I should cut that as well. And that. Sweet. So let's keep going. Um, yeah, so what's the first step of putting these together? I mean, they're, they're pretty complex and, you know, for all intents and purposes, we didn't really design them to be together. So, I mean, we do have to make some decisions here. Um, the first one being, well, maybe the orientation, right? Do I want it to be very much in the base? All right, I mean, that might be kind of interesting. I know it's kind of all green for you guys. Um, but it starts to be somewhat interesting, right? It, it definitely seems to be coming out, right? And some of this, obviously, um, we see that these sticks are going straight through, right? We even see that some of the elements are going completely through, and that's fine. Um, but again, we want to have that information on our laser cut so we don't have to do jack, right? In terms of lining this up, now it simply becomes a puzzle piece that we can, of course, lock these into. So, um, so yeah, right now I'm basically just building my model. So, oh, I should have grouped that. And see, this is why I group things because see, I want to move my topography model, but I'm going to go ahead and have to select everything. However, if this is grouped, it makes selecting things a little bit easier, guys, right? To say the least. However, be careful, I accidentally selected everything in the background. So let's get those, of course, group them. And the reason I group them is, uh, again, for ease, right? I can sort of move this around here right, and see what that's doing. I, I like the way the columns are going into, you know, kind of both surfaces like that. I mean, that's pretty interesting. Um, obviously, I'm going to have to Boolean subtract. You know, that's, that's kind of interesting as a space. You know, I, I kind of like this interesting space. I could go ahead uh, and ungroup. And this is what I meant by step three. You can still change things. Right, so if you wanted to change your abstraction a bit, absolutely. Right, not too bad. Some of this stuff you might be, well, I might not need that one anymore, or you know, maybe it needs to pop up actually a little bit. Be a platform, that's fine. So you can still make design decisions. Right, I, I hope that that point is clear. Right, and, and in fact, you have to. Right, because now you got to put a stair in there, and of course, we need to be able to walk through it. So. Let's get rid of this base, because I, I no longer really need it. So I'm going to go ahead and ungroup. I could hide it or delete it. And I'm going to go ahead and group this back together, because that would be a mess to try and select. Right? 
Let's move it into place. My stairs might not work for this situation, but I'm going to fake it till I make it. You may decide that, well, you just don't like your stairs with your composition. So, however, mine seems to work pretty cool. Not gonna lie. Uh, obviously, I, I need to fix some things, maybe make a hole or two. But that's looking pretty cool. You know, the stairs start over here. Obviously, <laughs> I want to chop off some of the uh, handrails going on. I don't know. Maybe I need to raise it up a little bit. Now we're talking. Now we're getting somewhere. Obviously, I'm going to have to go through that a little bit. Okay, so maybe I get rid of one. That's fine. Maybe I use this one to actually sort of hold that one up, if you will. Sweet. It's looking pretty cool. Obviously, I might need to subtract from this if I really want this element to come about. I mean, I, again, I'm setting myself up as a puzzle piece. All right, sorry, you guys can't see that too well. Hold on. Uh, let's choose a different color. Maybe pink shows up. Eh, not as well. It almost looks red. It's so crazy that it's completely different colors in the projector. Let's find a color that shows that shape a little better. Usually red is okay. Let's try white. Oh, yellow, yellow. Oh, it's orange on my screen. Okay. But that seems to help us out a little bit more, right? At least in seeing that little that little notch. And this is what I mean by the puzzle piece thing, right? Because we're about to unroll all of these pieces, and we're not going to cut any of this by hand, right? So, I mean, there's the good news. You don't have to do any of this by hand. Uh, but the bad news is, well, we do have to be um, a little bit more practical in what we're doing. Right. Um, we can no longer just kind of improv it when it comes to this digital model. I mean, we can, let's face it. You forget to cut the holes. You can, at the end of the day, cut them yourself. But I don't want you to work harder. Right. So, of course, more planning um, in this digital realm, of course, leads to a lot less headaches right, in the real world. Now, obviously, some of this stuff, uh, yeah, I can't have poles going through. So let's move that a little bit this way. I could decide to delete some of the poles, but you know maybe I want to keep them. I might need some structure, but right now that's that's pretty complex. I don't know how I would make that. You know, it's pretty impossible. There's certain situations. This is exactly what I mean. Um, so you either have to get rid of it, sort of just delete that piece, because that works too, or realize, uh, you know, some of the stuff you, you don't need every single piece, right? And very often it looks better that way anyway. So, um, you might realize, oh crap, you know, I have some stuff that just doesn't even work yet. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and copy. And it looks like I'm going to need something to kind of hold this up. So, fake it till I make it. Okay, put that one on the next one. So, copy. Use my ortho. And make a copy. Yeah, it almost gets in there. Yep, locks right onto it. Wonderful. So I'll be able to put those pieces together. Awesome. We'll sort of be able to use this one to kind of hold those up, I think, with that grid. So I'm going to place those above that grid. And it's starting to come off off the topography a little bit. So again, I'm just going to raise the topography a little bit till that stair. Perfect. So again, this is what I mean to really kind of dive into the model. Um, I don't know about you, but I always got lost in this part, right? Because, you know, to me, I was like, shoot, I don't even need to make the model. Texas Tech usually didn't even require us to make a physical model. So, uh, you know, I was quite deliberate with my digital stuff, right? Um, literally Photoshopping it up to be like, wow, did how did you do this? Right? And I just made a digital model and, of course, Photoshopped it. Um, sometimes I 3D printed as well. But, yeah. Uh, a couple of other things, obviously uh, can't walk through walls, so let's go ahead and make an opening. Uh, for the sake of time, I'm just going to make a circle real quick. Of course, I'm going to use my views and get out of wireframe mode. Shaded. Let's go to shaded. Sweet. And sweet. So I need to draw something that actually, of course, cuts through this. Now, the reason I like to do it in the view is, well, it stays at that, that flat view, right? So, I don't know. I want, the obviously, the people to be able to walk through this. So, it needs to be a big enough circle. 
And a liptoid would work as well. Maybe the stair, you know, quite literally goes straight through it. Starting to line up pretty well. Obviously, it's way over there. So let's take that out, maybe. Now let's just test it. Wire cut. Obviously, that little piece. There it is. Wire cut. Cut straight through there. Awesome. Got it. And we'll delete that piece. And that's looking uh, pretty cool. Right, not too shabby. Might need to fake it till I make it a little bit more and push that down a little bit. Here, there. Might realize I don't need that pole. Yeah, I don't really. That's cool. Uh, that seems to work. Obviously, I need my other handrail. Need to ungroup some stuff. It's so, alright. Ungroup. Obviously, I don't want these poles in the way. So I, I do need to shape up, you know, just a little bit. I think it's okay if some things go straight through, but again, keep in mind that that leads to a certain situation in the reality. Right? So I don't know. At the end of the day, you might realize that you can delete a lot of stuff. Like, um, anything that you don't need, obviously, um, if it's not touching anything, it's not holding anything up, yeah, why do we need it? It's just going to be extra stuff. However, this process or this step will probably take the longest, right? Uh, what I would suggest is really walking yourself through it like you would any other architectural project, right? Um, I start at the bottom. Let's go up. Obviously, I had to cut that out. All right, I'm going to make turn the corner. Uh, I got a pole in the way. An interesting Mies van der Rohe pole. However, it does seem to be holding up other elements, right? Or at least I could potentially use it to hold up other elements. So... I don't know, maybe instead of using this pole, I'm going to go ahead and use this grid. So maybe i got to raise that a little bit. Perfect. No longer need it. Right. We'll just take that one on the back. But yeah, see how I, I kind of made that decision? I, I used another grid, of course, to hold something up, rather than you know just going with uh, whatever is closest. Right. Kind of look around. You, you kind of search a little bit. Uh, but that's looking good. Good. I kind of like that this is imposing on the stairs. It's going to be a huge problem, but I like it. Um, in fact, I would make um, probably this portion of the stairs by hand, right, and just kind of improv that. So don't get me wrong, I can break my own rules too. If I realize certain things are going to be hard, but I want to keep them, um, I just kind of reconcile them as like, I'll deal with it when I make the model, right? And some of you guys are definitely going to have that thought as you're going through this process, and that's completely normal. So. Uh, let's continue. Obviously, I don't have anything really holding up this part of the stair. I mean, maybe that's enough. Maybe that's enough up there. But it seems kind of a long floating range there. So, I don't know. I might need to add something. Um, I might have to bring stuff back. Right? Might be able to fake it a little bit more. But as you can see, it's a puzzle in itself. Right? And some of this stuff... Yeah, that one's going straight through there. Probably don't need that one either. Sweet. But for the most part, uh, I can't get rid of too many of these red pipes, right? And in fact, a good rule would be, well, if you delete one, it might not be a bad idea to copy one too, just in case. I kind of like it. It's kind of got the center Pompidou vibe. You know, it's got the structure on the outside. So I don't know, maybe I put that there for now. Not a big deal. Uh, test it out. Why not? But let's say I was done, you know, I finished, um, you know, some of the stuff I might realize, well, that just needs to be shorter. I can trim it, right? So another thing with three-dimensional objects is you can trim. It does take a little longer. And let's face it, if it's going through a lot of things, you definitely don't want to use trim. But in my case, it looks like it's just going through this plane. So two things, we can either shorten it, right, or chop it up. So trim, and we'll click, might take a second, it is trimming a three-dimensional object, I'll give it 10 seconds, obviously if it's too complex for your computer, there's 15 other ways to get rid of something, so not a big deal, we'll just shrink it down a little bit since we have plenty there 
and just use it to hold up that platform. Right. Maybe this column in general. Obviously, I got a lot going on because of just you know the nature of my tutorials. So um, obviously, hopefully, yours aren't as chaotic as mine uh, appears to look. Right. Uh, but some of this stuff lines up perfectly, right? You know, it can use it to, of course, hold these things up. But like I said, uh, we are focused on the topography today and unrolling some of these surfaces, so I do want to get to those things. Uh, but yeah, this process can take a little bit longer. I'd probably say this is probably the most time you want to spend on it, or the majority of the time is, is really kind of just diving into this model and making sure it works here first. I can't say that enough, guys. There's a reason we use digital technology, and it's because, uh, let's face it, this building might cost $50 million. I don't want to spend a million dollars just to find out it doesn't work. So you better believe, um, especially when it comes to like, so I don't know how many of you guys are interested in like manufacturing situations, such as like a Toyota assembly line, but you better believe they have that entire assembly line as a computer model first, right? Actually making measurements for those machines to make sure that they can actually do the things that they can do, right? Uh, don't get me wrong, there's also 100 people getting paid $100,000 a year to do so. However, if you actually like this aspect of digital reality, let me tell you, it pays really, really well in the real world. So um, if you really like this fabrication stuff, um, yeah, there's, there's definitely an avenue for it. Somebody was, saying yesterday that a teacher was saying there's not a lot of good money in architecture and I was like that's complete bullshit there's good money in anything that you want to make good money in. I've seen people be millionaires off of poppets I mean come on like um, anyway it was saddening to hear that you know somebody was being so what's the word saddening right for our profession um, because there are you know if maybe being rich is not your goal, that's fine too. I don't think it's a great goal either anyway. But um, anyway, you can make money is what I'm trying to say. But we're at a good spot. Um, I'm going to go ahead and group some of this together. right Now, this is where being organized will really, really come in handy. Now, it turns out, you know, since it was a tutorial, I was starting to be less organized so I can show you just how difficult it is to mend some of these situations. But yeah. Hopefully, since I did have some of my stuff, or maybe it's all on one layer, yep, aw oh, man, that stinks. And so this is what happens, you're like, oh man, I need to select stuff, but I can't reduce it. Not to worry though, let's face it, I can select stuff, and of course apply it to a layer. All right, so when in doubt, you know, I can always organize secondhand, but again, being organized will be really helpful, especially in this situation where not only are we going to make the parts and keep track of them, um, we're also going to produce drawings from these as well. So you better believe you want to be organized with all those pieces still. Uh, but yeah, we still can be. So let's say these turned out to be vertical drums. Awesome. Right, let's make sure that they read as, as vertical drums. So of course, right click and change object layer. And it'll actually change that color as well. So again, we can be organized, not a big deal. Um, but it definitely goes a lot faster and I wish I was a little bit more organized for the tutorial as well. Anyway, let's continue because like I said, we can remove some of this information from the base. That way um, we can find it useful. Obviously some of these we won't even need. Uh, some of the stuff you just need to chop it out, right? So in my case, I don't want to necessarily go straight through the model in this case. Um, and right now I've already got the circle sort of ready to go. I can't just move it again. So let's go ahead and trim it from this layer. Right. Or we can Boolean difference it. So let's, let's try some things out. Let's Boolean difference. Subtract with this one. Obviously you'll see what happens. Just going to chop those off. Well, it chopped it right out, right? So if I delete it, of course it chopped this right out. However, I don't necessarily need it to go all the way through, which is what I was mentioning. So let's try that trim method again. And trim method works pretty well too, at least in easier situations. Now it's still gonna technically cut all the way through. 
So I'd want to ungroup this and maybe select this layer. Why? Because it's my trim. And I could further get rid of you know anything that I didn't need. Oh, don't want to get rid of my layer. But yeah, now we have that information at least on these planar elements, right? Now I'm gonna laser cut that, right? Not necessarily the one that I made previously. However, I'd want to finish everything. So, yep, we need to do the same thing to this one. Oh, accidentally moved it a bit. Again, another reason to um, to group things. Not easily moved. These are actually looking pretty cool. I didn't even notice them. We were putting the model together. Um, yeah, I think they could be longer. Maybe eventually give us some support as well. So I'm going to put those in the ground. Not too far in the ground. Maybe shorten up some because obviously we don't want those lines at the bottom. Some of this stuff, we just don't even need it. Right? Perfect. And then of course some of those are just my lines from the original composition that I made. Right? So obviously I don't need those either. But yeah, again, let's subtract. Now in my case, um, it might have been a good idea to keep that as a group. right? Of course I can make it a group again, but man, wouldn't it have been nice if I just had a topography layer, right? Because now I'm going to sit here and hopefully select the right things. And something way off in the distance. Right, so I'll hold command if I'm on Mac. I'll hold control to unselect something. Anyway, just in case you need that reminder, let's uh, Boolean difference this again, right? Or actually let's try split. I want to show you what split does too. They all kind of do the same thing, but of course have different um, sort of leftovers, if you will. I, I don't know what better to call that. So I'm going to, um, actually I'm going to select this one. I'm going to cut that one and that one, enter. And as you can see, it sort of split the surface up. But what's interesting is it's like, it's in there. So let's go to ghosted mode real quick. So that leftover is actually in there. Right? So it stays there, and what's nice is, well, it leaves a little piece right, that we can, of course, delete from. Of course, there's that puzzle piece again, right? And again, helpful, right? Because why would we work harder when we can literally build this model in seconds, right? By just putting together puzzle pieces. Same thing here. Obviously, get rid of that one. And, you know, as you're making this model, obviously, you can start to hide things doesn't look like it cut completely through. Oh, it's just still in there. Gotcha. Well, it cut it through that layer. So again, a good reason to, to use all your tools. All right, let's try that again. Boolean split. Looks like even though it was a grouped object, it was still treating it as a not grouped object, which is good. Definitely good to be aware of. But yeah it's going to end up making a another little box for us. But that's fine. Again, just trying to show you what we can do before we go down to the laser cutter. Um, lastly, right, so obviously these are pretty easy. You just take this base model. Now that you've made all your cuts or let's say, let's get some of the, the these guys in there. So I'm going to go ahead and hide that one. Wow, so much easier to select something. You know what I'm saying? Anyway. So, well, there's a bit long, but that's okay. Let's cut right through it. So, Boolean, actually, let's try intersection. Right? Like I said, a lot of them do the exact same thing, but give you different results. So, I'm going to test some things out. Um, yeah, doesn't look like what I want. Obviously, I do want to keep those. Let's try it the other way around. So I'm going to select my layers first, enter, and then these guys. Uh, not exactly what I want, but kind of interesting. You know, if I needed that leftover piece, you know, that's exactly what I would do. Not too bad. However, let's not use that one. Obviously, it's not working for us. Let's stick to our, our knowns. Let's go with difference. 
and maybe just even select one of these at a time. Not a big deal, there's not a lot of them. Enter. And of course, as you can see, it's su uh, subtracted from each of those layers. Thank goodness, you know, that you know things are the same and of course layered. However, gosh, I wish I would have took these pieces and been more organized. Again, save me some time. However, it looks like it, yep, cut those holes right out of each and every single layer. So again, really nice. Um, actually, there we go. So let's say we were done doing all those subtractions and things from our base. Obviously the next step, don't want to take that one. Again, I should have just been organized. Probably should have made a copy before I moved that. Let's actually do that. I don't want to lose that position. It'd be very hard to get that back. So always make a copy. Uh, but yeah, now we have a very detailed puzzle piece plan of what is supposed to happen or what is supposed to be cut. Now I can't just make 2D this. However, I'll show you a trick. Doesn't really matter which ones you take out. They just need to be all laid flat. Right? So I'll show you the tips and tricks. All right, that's what we come to our class for. Obviously, we can't put it above us because it'll just still overlap. And I'm basically just spreading them out. Right, not a big deal. Because I work smarter, not harder, right? So I'll get those away from each other. Get that little one. Let's take a look at it from the top way easier to make 2D. Now this is one of the parts I didn't really get to last time and it's in a different layer so when you make make 2D be careful right you might be like wow it didn't make anything of course do make sure that that layer is on right so of course that it'll make those layers for you or that they'll be visible but again can you guys imagine cutting this information perfectly not me, right? You might not be able to see it so well in the projector. I apologize, but um, yeah, it speaks for itself, right? You know, some of this stuff, it's like, man, I wish I knew this back in the day. Um, but you can still actually change things. So even though these are kind of revealing, they show all the pieces, um, and nicely enough, it's going to cut it out all perfectly for us. I mean, imagine trying to cut that. Gosh. Anyway, uh, the laser cut is going to do it just fine. Um, obviously it does have a limit, we'll talk about that a little bit. Um, but the next thing before the laser cutter, what I like to do, again, in the, for the sake of organization, is I like to have a cut layer and a score layer. Now you really don't need any more than that. However, these two layers do have to be very specific, so let's do cover that. Um, first, it's its print color, right, so you'll notice there's a print width a line type, print color, and in fact if you right click there's all kinds of different properties to your layers that you're welcome to look at. However for today we'll double click on the color and for cutting it actually has to be a perfect color. Does anybody know what cut color we have on our laser cutter? It is red. It is red. Okay. So it can't be like an off red. I, I can't just choose like any red here. It needs to actually be red and I know that sounds really ridiculous but well essentially the printer downstairs only reads seven colors and if it doesn't see that exact color red it basically doesn't see those lines that it needs to cut or that you're telling it to cut so do make sure that your layer is red and of course for scoring sorry making sure it's red I didn't even have it red right that would have been a mistake and for cut, I need to make sure it's exactly blue, not dark blue, not lavender, but exactly blue. So, of course, apply those. Um, since, honestly, all of these are going to be cut, it doesn't look like there's a lot of score. Um, I'm going to go ahead and make them all cut. And then actually go back and see if I am missing anything and that it does actually need to be scored. Um, so, for information like, say, the number, right? I might want to label these. After all, um, honestly, for this project, I'm only doing a couple of layers, uh, but you better believe these guys, they definitely layered all their 
Like they, they imprinted the number on each one to make it easier for themselves. Because let's face it, this piece can look like that piece after three hours. Right? Um, and you might actually get that mixed up. So don't get me wrong, this is actually how we make really complex architecture. How many of you guys have seen some of the parametric architecture, like a stadium? Right? How many of you guys maybe saw the nest in China um, that they use for the Olympics, right? Do you think they kind of just made that up as they went along, or they made a perfect digital model first, right? That of, of course they were sharing between all the engineers, the plumbers, the electricians, all those people had to work on this model first before they send it to the manufacturer who basically got what we're doing right now. Um, they made that digital model, but they made all the pieces based off of these. However, we still have to sit there. Now, I'm not going to teach you the cool grasshopper stuff we can do to label stuff because that's a little bit more advanced. Uh, we'll do it a little bit more manually, and obviously I can do a one, right? One, two, you can use A, B, C, D, E, F, G. You could use one A, two B, two C, all, all those kinds of variations. However, there's even better ways to do this um, in Grasshopper, but I won't do that today. Uh, what I will say is put your number in a place that you know it's going to be hidden, right? Obviously in a topography model, putting the number right here in the base makes a lot of sense because I know, well, it's all going up and it's, man, it's gonna get covered, right? It's not gonna get covered, however, if I put the number over by the edge here. Right, you'll see some numbers in your topography model, and that's not good. We don't want to see the numbers because that really kind of breaks the illusion of not only how this was put together and made, but mm, you don't want to see numbers on the topography. Right, so do hide it to your best ability. But since we are going to score it, I do need to explode it because right now it's more like a hatch, and if I explode it, it becomes more like a line type. Right, obviously the laser cutter doesn't like hatching. In fact, you can laser cut hatching, but it will take a good five hours, right, going back and forth. You can print images. In fact, it really is just a fancy printer, but instead of ink, it's using lasers, right? Um, anyway, so that'll be our score for today. Um, and last but not least, I want to show you, obviously, I think topography um, is pretty simple, right, for us. Um, I think the hardest part that you guys are actually... Uh, going to get into, and which is why this is a three-part series, is because some of this stuff you can also make. Now, don't get me wrong, um, there's two ways to make this box. Alright, so let's go ahead and make a copy of it. The first way to make this box is, well, look at it. It's regular. Um, is there any material that I have is, that is maybe this thickness? And I simply just cut it out. Right, obviously make 2D and cut out a rectangle. Not a not a big deal on that one. Right. However, there's another way to make that box. And we can basically unroll it. So I'm gonna go ahead and type in unroll surface. I'm gonna hit enter. I'm not gonna hit explode, and I'll try it again with explode just to kind of show you what it does. But I'm gonna hit no explode, and of course you can do labels, keep properties. I'm gonna go ahead and keep properties to see. I can't remember what that does. I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. It's going to look like it did nothing, but on the other side, usually where our make 2D is, it's going to actually produce something for us. You guys see that? Let's go ahead and try it uh, with the explosion, just to kind of show you what that does. Of course, hit enter, um, and it really did explode. It. So let's move some stuff out of the way first. There we go. But this rectangle and this rectangle are the exact same. Of course, one's been laid flat. It's almost like a make 2D for three-dimensional objects. But for instance, right, obviously I could take the ISO curves off and it's gonna look kind of familiar, right? What's interesting is, well, if we laser cut this out and we fold it, it'll make that perfect box, right? Now, don't get me wrong, this is gonna be really hard to laser cut. Right? It might just be a lot easier for me to just make a rectangle, right? or even two and glue them together for God's sake. Right? Because, well, clearly laser cutting this and folding it is going to take longer than well, just making a square or a rectangle. Does that make sense, guys? So use it to the best of your ability. Now, the next question is like, well, okay, what about that? You know, how do I get that out of the way? Well, 
A couple of things first that I might want to do before I unroll it is maybe subtract some of the information that's going to go through it. So, well, let's take that piece. Let's Boolean difference or split or intersection. In my case, I'm going to use difference and get these poles that are going straight through it. Now, I don't know how many poles are going straight through, so I'm kind of just getting them all. Uh, I think that's all of them. And press enter. Obviously, it's going to subtract from there, but I definitely want that information before I unroll it, right? Because again, I'm either going to have to sit there in the physical model and cut these out, or it's going to be all done for me because of my perfect planning. So again, I'm going to make a copy because uh, this is kind of my go-to model. I don't want to actually mess up too many things about it. So again, I'm just copying the pieces out of it just in case I mess up or don't get the result I want. I'm going to go ahead and unroll surface again. And this, this time I'm not going to explode it just to kind of show you that some things work and some things don't. I'm going to keep properties. And as you can see, this one does not work. Can anybody tell me why? Because how in the world are you supposed to get a perfect circle if it's inside of the object itself? Right? That's going to make a really funky object. So obviously, um, keeping properties is not going to work for this one. Let's try again. Let's go ahead and explode it. Oh, that's a little easier, don't you think? Maybe. I could even make it a little bit easier and actually probably glue some of these parts together. Now, think about it. These are kind of those parts that you really don't need because, well, that's actually the inside surface of these little guys. So in reality, let's face it, that's kind of a, what's the word, um, a consequence of laser cutting, right? Obviously, there's going to be a surface inside of that circle. However, you don't need to make those pieces, right? So right from the get-go, that saves us some time. And really, all we need is these four pieces, right? Now, that's going to be honestly kind of hard to put together, right? Um, so what would make it easier? Maybe putting some together. Nice. Well, that's going to make it easier. And now I just have one piece, right, to worry about, and two pieces. Well, that doesn't quite work, right? Because one is the inside and one is the outside, right? So, hmm, I don't know. Maybe I attach one to here on this circle and I attach one to there on that circle. Would that work? Maybe not. Maybe so. Um, to be completely honest, it, I'm not sure. This is a pretty simple object, so it probably would work. But, you know, I don't want to go with probably. So let's try it again. Home roll surface. I'm going to go ahead and explode and key properties. Let's try that one out. That's about the same as the explode. So not much difference. So it looks like that's going to be the easiest for us uh, there. Although that's not too bad. Obviously, how would I make this physically? What do you think? Cut it, store it. Absolutely, exactly. Now, I could do that by hand, or honestly, I could just roll it. Right? I could I get against the edge of the desk, or you know, start rolling the museum board or the chip board, right? obviously, once it cut that rectangle. However, just as Andrew was mentioning, we can score it as well. However, I don't want to take this. I can't laser cut that, but I can make 2D it. However, I don't want to make 2D of my perspective. So be careful. Right? It's very easy to just accidentally do that. So make 2D, enter. Of course, it'll produce those parts for us. And again, we can change their layer type to cut. And this is what exactly what I mean by get kind of used to all four views because you eventually start using them simultaneously. But that's looking good. Obviously, I need those to all be cut, cut. Um, I would probably just go with the thickness of the material. Does that make sense, guys? I probably wouldn't even make these. So anyway. Um, and this is what I mean. You kind of just have to think out the model. Like, okay, I'm rolling the surface. Now what? Oh wait, I already have that top circle. I don't really need it, right? So do keep that in mind. Also, um, you can double up on thicknesses. You can 
print, basically laser cut these twice, glue them on top of each other, and suddenly have more thickness to work with. Right? However, I'll let you discover kind of why that works and doesn't work. But anyway, there's limitations, right? Um, the digital realm is a very perfect situation compared to reality. How many of you guys have realized this, right? You know, um, not all bass was the exact same. Not all chip was the exact same. Not all uh, graphite is the same. Not all ink comes out of the pin the same way, right? Reality is very unpredictable. So clearly there's a reason why humans develop these digital technologies and it was actually to because we're scared, right? I don't know about you, but I'm pretty scared to make a um, uh, hundred million dollar bridge that's gonna support somebody's life. I don't know about you, but um, I toyed with being an engineer versus an architect because of that very reason. I, I looked at the insurance that some engineers have and uh, some of the penalties for not checking your work as an engineer, right? They literally go to jail if, if somebody dies in their building, so it's very serious. Uh, whereas an architect, uh, they have a little bit more limited liability. The, I don't know of any architects who've gone to jail uh, because of their mistakes. Right? So it becomes a very real situation, guys. Um, obviously, we use this tool to, to save our lives um, in a sense of words. But uh, as Andrew was saying, um, I do want to score this. However, maybe I don't have the information to score it, so I'm just going to fake it till I make it. I know that there's 360 sides to a circle. However, that seems a bit kind of crazy. I wouldn't tell the laser cutter to make 360 lines. So I'm going to reduce that to 36. I'm going to go ahead and divide it into 36 segments. And in my case, I just need a cut, or sorry, um, score line. So I'm going to switch to my score material. Go ahead and draw a line. Make sure my point's enacted and my perpendicular. Sweet. And then of course I can just copy that or array it or you know whatever your go-to is. Obviously I don't want to sit there all day. So I'm going to copy that five at or six at a time. Use the same locking point that I started with and go from there. Even 36 is kind of overkill here but that would definitely help me roll this paper. Now it's going to help me roll this this way. Is it going to help me roll it the other way? No, in fact, it's going to make it harder and it's going to make it break, right? So one thing you might realize is, well, uh-oh, I have the outside of my circle and I have the inside of my circle. Now on the inside, I'll need to also curve it on the outside. So I may realize that, oh shit, I may need to mirror this because I can't tell the laser cutter to, hey, can you go ahead and laser cut it from the bottom? No, of course it's only gonna cut from the top. So I might need to mirror it so that it actually is the other side of that information. And clearly this wouldn't make, this doesn't matter if I didn't have these, but it does matter because I have those. So I'm gonna take the mirrored, obviously delete that one. And use the scoring lines again. Now, honestly, I would just fake it till I make it. And they should be relatively the same size. So obviously, I can copy those over and use them accordingly. The next thing I could do to, again, help myself is to make some sort of glue tab. Right? I mean, I don't know about you, but uh, have you ever tried to roll two pieces together? And, well, the solution would be to just, you know, roll this together and then just take this side. And obviously try and glue it. But um, how many of you guys have ever opened that cereal box and all the flaps, right? And you, you unglue it and there's a bunch of flaps to all these these um, 2D planar elements, right? So very often what I'd say, go ahead and draw yourself a little tab. That way you have something to glue on. Of course, we don't want to score it. We do want it to cut out. So let's switch it to cut. And of course, I'll show you what I mean as we demonstrate this downstairs. But yeah, now we got a tab. I need a, a fold line there. So I'm going to go ahead and give, make itself a little easier for myself. Give myself another score line so that that little flap. And of course, uh, a, a little amount of glue goes on there. That way, I can make it easier for myself. Right? Arguably, I could do it to the other side. That way, you know, 
don't get me wrong I want you to experiment guys this isn't for studio I'm not gonna grade um, I mean I will grade the craft of it obviously but I do want to see some experimentation here right use something that you've never tried before you don't know if it's gonna work try it now because I'd rather you try it now and find that out than to try it in D4 studio at the competition project next uh, next couple of weeks right and you're like it didn't work right? well did you test it anyway so um, for the most part this will conclude the actual uh, digital version but just to recap uh, we talked about the topography obviously those we talked about putting the model together and what we have to kind of do to make that work um, the subtraction method from all of our pieces and as you guys can see this is going to get really complex really fast and this is just a little project so again can't uh, stress enough being organized is your best friend you will love yourself uh, five years from now I, I can assure you but any questions uh, maybe that came up as I was doing this I always like to ask because again somebody else might have the exact same question guys any at all before we go downstairs? Alright, we'll leave it at that.